Yep, the session is being recorded. Okay. Uh, once you're done, uh, once I end the session, okay, automatically uh, it will give you the recording. Just email me using the Google Drive or any one of the facility and okay. give me the recording. Okay. Sure. Cool. So before I begin, anyone, any questions? Great. So silence, I'll assume no questions. So if no questions, uh, let me quickly begin my VM. Uh, a quick recap of what we discussed in the last session. In the last session, we did the installation of the JVOS application server using the Windows-based operating system as well as the Linux-based operating system. I shown you both GUI and the command line or the console mode of installation. Now what we'll try to do is that uh, we'll try to talk about the directory structure that we get post installing the JBoss application server. What are the files and the folders that are available post installing the JBoss application server? And we'll try to discuss more about that. Let me log into the VM. Uh, let me update this putty session settings so that you can see that. Cool. So I installed the JBoss application server in home shiva1 eap folder and the part where i install the jboss application server i call that one as in jboss home so when i go inside the jboss home i see a couple of files and folders okay it's not important that you know about each and every file each and every folder but certain files and folders that are there they are very very important so we'll then discuss about the list of files and folders we have okay why they are important etc and etc just give me one minute. Someone is trying to reach me. Just give me one minute.
Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, so coming back to the installation and the installation related directory structure. So the first file we see here is called as a version.txt. What is this version.txt? As the name itself indicates, this is a file that contains the version of the JBoss application server you installed. At any point of the time post installation, where you're confirming to the client that, hey, the JBoss application server is successfully installed, and this is a version of the JBoss application server I installed. How do you say that? Just simply uh, share the output of the version.txt to the customer. The version.txt will have the information about the version of the JBoss application server you install. So once you're done about the version.txt, the next one is the license agreement. While you're trying to do the installation of the JBoss application server, there were a couple of rules and regulations, there were a couple of agreement related stuff that came in as part of the installation of the JBoss application server. This is the file that contains a complete list of instructions, okay, that are related to the rules and regulations that are related to the license agreement, which you agreed during the installation of the JBoss application server. At any point of the time, if you want to go to the list of rules and regulations that you agreed during the installation, you can use the license.txt file. Once you're done talking about that, the next one we have is the dot installation. Little important. I think uh, I deleted this accidentally, I think. Okay, but dot installation will contain the list of files and folders that got created as part of the installation. When we attend to the installation, there are certain temporary variables, there are certain temporary for folders that gets created. Okay, whatever is a... Hello? Hello? Kiti, Raja? Uh, Aditya, am I audible? Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, dot the, the dot installation is a folder that contains the temporary files, temporary folders that are getting created during the installation process. Okay, at any point of the time, don't try to delete the contents that are there inside the dot installation file or folder during the installation post installation if you try to delete the dot installation folder also no problem but this is like a temp folder of your installation the second one we have here is about the modules folder very 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 important i'll come back to the app client and bundles in another couple of more minutes okay but if you see the modules folder what is this modules folder in a typical Web logic, web sphere, or a Tomcat environment. Whenever I want to set the class path, how do I set the class path? I simply go to the lib folder, copy the jar file, and try to update the class path. In JBoss application server, it's little different. Okay. Whenever you want to update the class path, whenever you have some database related driver file, application related driver file, which you want to append as part of the class path then you need to go through the modules directory then you need to update through the modules directory what is the path and the related information i'll talk in another couple of more minutes okay probably not in a couple of more minutes in a couple of sessions but remember that whenever you want to update your class path whenever you want to edit your class path whenever you want to have a new class uh, a new feature that needs an update in the class path file, then the changes when you need to make related to the class path letter jar file is the modules directory. And remember, whatever the JBoss application server supports, for example, transaction management, for example, the uh, default DB that comes with the JBoss application server, for example, the EGBs, for example, a trans uh, 